Hello everybody, it's SD Madhaven here today, and I'm going to be bringing you guys a replay inside of the E75 that, well, it's all about teamwork. A while back, I, I mentioned teamwork inside of World of Tanks, but I never really went over everything that I mean by teamwork. Whenever I say teamwork, I mean like a commander inside your platoon, someone you play with quite a bit, or... Just randomly jumping in, just have some fun. Now, talking about five-man platoons, along with five-man platoons, the reasons why they took five-man platoons away, is because if we had a five-man platoon and we're all playing the game, and I had a five-man platoon, and every single person inside my platoon, let's say we're all super unicums, and the platoon in the enemy team is nothing but average players, maybe a little bit below average, and they just like to play the game because they just have fun playing. Now, if you end up against a team that's a five-man platoon, that's nothing but super unicums, the difference that they can make in a battle is absolutely tremendous. Now, this replay, keep in mind, this is with Blade and one random person that's, um, tight bands that was uh, on stream the last time I streamed, and he wanted to join, so I said he can join. I have no problem with that. I can help him grind out some experience in his tier 9 and give him some better matches and try to see if we can get something to go good. And we did. Now, the matches we had with this group of three, it was consistent. Everything went good. You know, I'm playing a tank that I know how to play extremely well. I enjoy the E75. I've three marked it. I've also, as of recent, just 100%ed my damage standing inside the E75, which, well, not exactly the easiest thing to do in a tank, but it is possible. It is a pain in the butt, though. It is a massive pain in the butt. Yeah, it took a minute. Ugh. Like, just... Yeah, there, there's there's um, there's um things that I do in this game anymore that make me stop and question my sanity and um, how much I go outside. But other than that, we're, we're here to talk about this replay. Now, Blade is playing inside the Type 4, and then we have um, Tight Bands playing inside his Emil. And... The positions I wanted the tank, I, I wanted to try and hold the left side, take it slow. There's no real big reason to move around or play aggressive. You just want to kind of hold back and just take your time. Whenever you're playing inside bigger tanks, you know, it's it's better to find those positions you know that you can hold down. Pull up and, you know, play peekaboo a little bit and just try to find that ideal position. And if you had a group of five you could easily set up this area with five people to hold off against eight or nine players. So, with the five-man platoon on this map, or five-man platoon on any map, more specifically any map, it doesn't matter, five-man platoons are extremely powerful, and I would rather leave it with three-man platoons, just because the three-man platoons, it, there's a lot more that can be done with a three-man, while with a five-man, a little bit too much can happen with a five-man platoon. Now, talking about the state of the game and everything else that's going on, um, I did try to play some Cold War. I'm not going to deny it. However, it was not fun sitting inside of a queue for three minutes and 40 seconds before I finally got put into a match inside uh, Air 3, and immediately after that one match I played, I was all like... I'm going back to World War II because I sat in a queue for three and a half minutes. To me, that's not fun. I, I could have, you know, looked at memes, watched another video, and sat there and just pulled my hair for a few minutes. Honestly, Cold War, if you guys are playing it, let me know how long the queue times are for you. I don't know why my queue times were so long that one time, which was last night. That queue time was absolutely insane. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind Cold War. I find that they just pumped it out a little bit too fast, and they're kind of pushing on the player base with all the new premium tanks that they're coming out with. Uh, the last tier 8 premium that came out was the C, yeah, the, the Basante C45, and it came into the game in such a state that I just don't recommend to buy it. If they buff the reload, that tank could be one of the more competitive tier 8s in the game to be completely honest, but right now, at this very moment, it is not a very competitive tier 8. It's got decent armor if you know how to play with the armor. It's not too bad, but the DPM of it absolutely demolished it, and I hate to say I cannot stand to play it anymore. I've put around 50 matches in my Basante, and it's 
gonna start collecting a very large amount of dust unless they buff it. Now, E75, you know, this is kind of a top tier matchmaking. This is one of the more ideal matchmaking setups for this tank with the position that we're taking. You know, a little bit harder to hit us using our German engineering because, you know, Germans, strong armor. It's not Russian, but it's German. Now, the E75, this tank is just, ever since it had its mobility buff applied to it a long time ago, it became one of the higher performing tier 9s in the game, especially with its 490 alpha. 11.5 second reloads what I'm running with. I'm running with advanced optics, advanced loader, and improved ventilation. Honestly, there is way too many things in this game that have advanced in it. It makes... I don't know why there's so many advanced things going on. Um, going over my crew, if you guys want to, just to listen to this. Uh, we're rocking Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Situational Awareness, Controlled Impact, Clutch Breaking, Sixth Sense, Track Mechanic, and Rapid Aim. Um, keep in mind, this is a crew that I run on my mouse, my E100, my VK... Uh, what is it? The VK-45? Oh, no, VK-72. It's the premium tier 10. I'm just having a very, very extremely smooth brain moment today. So, you know, like, whatever I say, I take it with a grain of salt. Like, over the past 30 seconds. It's smooth. It's pretty smooth. Yes. However, high explosive. Ooh, that was disgusting. Honestly, at this point in the match, I kind of knew that we want to try and, you know, hit this left side as hard as we can. Put a little bit more pressure down. Now, I took a little bit more damage than I wanted to take. I'm a little bit uncomfortable. There's only so much I can do. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was glorious. Iron Reigns, you know. Iron Reigns. Um, another thing that I would uh, love to throw out there. And this is also something that I want to ask the player base. I want to ask everyone I know. I want your guys' opinion on this. Do you guys want binoculars back? Remember that whenever you used to stand still and you would get that 25% view range bonus inside, let's say, your Grill 15, your Jagdpanzer E100, even your Scorpion G or your uh, Shaska SU-130PM. You know, those, those tanks that have that... 360 meters, 370 meters of view range. I feel like they're at such a massive disadvantage right now because binoculars has been removed from the game. You're kind of stuck relying on light tanks that like to YOLO, and I mean YOLO quite a bit. Along with that, there's... Yeah, I guess mediums, and every once in a while you, you do get those good teammates. You, you get those guys that just make you stop and smile because it went so well but it doesn't happen all the time now taking away equipment and then adding new equipment to the game don't get me wrong it was pretty cool that they added some new equipment to the game that we got to test out for the longest time but with more testing that i've been doing and you know more things i'm doing inside private queues i honestly kind of feel like i test more than the super tester set sometimes especially with uh my next content coming out that's going to make you guys stop and go, what is this? And then I'm just going to say it's because I like to break stuff. I'm just kidding. I like to I like to find ways to break stuff. And honestly, this one popped up. I, I knew about it for the longest time, but I never really did it. And it was just like, wow, that's um, a little bit broken. I'm going to mention this every single time until I post it. You guys have no idea. It's literally one of those things that it, it's game-breaking, but it's not game-breaking. It, it feels super meme -y. And while being super meme it's just not really that meme -y. It's messed up, but it's meme -y. It's hilarious. So, 5 to 4 right now. I'm down to 377 hit points. Blade's down below 700. Uh, I think I'm going to be double-checking hit points as I drive into a wall. Yes, you see the Muppet re-kicked in. There may be three marks on that barrel, but that does not mean I do not have my potato moments and my smooth brain moments. They're all different, by the way. There's like a rating system you have for potato, Muppet, and a smooth brain. Smooth brain is like the worst. Like, if you get called a smooth brain, it's pretty bad. If you get called a Muppet, it's like an NPC. It's not as bad, but Smooth Brain is like, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. And then you have Potato. 
<laughs> potato was like aiming. Yeah, we'll just go potato aiming. Whatever. Problem solved. Don't worry about it. We're just going to go. So, taking the back side of the map, we're going to head down the 1-2 line. Um, tell him Blade, I want him to try and go down the 3-4 line as we go down the 1-2 line. I do not want to get caught out by any of the tank destroyers that's left. We know that the Iron Rain was last spotted up top along with the Medium. Uh, but we do not know where the artillery is. Honestly, I wasn't paying too much attention about what was going on. As you guys notice, I kind of driving to a wall. wasn't paying too much attention. But, it is what it is. And... We all make mistakes. We're human, you know. Most of the time I play this game anymore, and the only thing I want to do is uh, drive around a Gorinch and ram people. Well, actually, the uh, E-75TS and uh, the Basante getting it upside down. Just kidding. Basante sucks. Don't buy it. Um, how to get lost. Get lost. Yeah. Yeah, today, today is a strange day. It was hot. I had to put together a couple of desks, and it was hot. Yeah, I'm toasty. A little bit toasty. How do you shower? Just a little bit. <laughs> but my day is not over yet. I still got a ton of stuff to do. Um, along with that, I've been stacking up my silver as much as I can. I'm trying to get in all the requests. I've been recording matches, getting things set up, and honestly, enjoying it. You know, I may complain about World of Tanks. I may complain about a couple of things that go on. Artillery hits me. I have a little saying that I always say. I'm like, oh, they still exist. Which, honestly, kind of stuck. I said it one day and it never left. You know, they still exist. It's because they do. And when they hit you for 500 and they're two tiers below you and you're just sitting there, oh yeah, that's right, you exist. Yep. That's pain. That's a lot of pain. Alright, so now right here, telling Blade to pull him to the left side, take the center of the map. We're going to try and take full control of the center. Because I originally thought I want to cut out to the right side. I want to see what we can do. But I thought about it. There's a possibility that I'm going to get caught out in the open. And I'm just going to get obliterated. If I take the inside right here, I have a better chance. Because I can side scrape. There's a couple of dirt piles that I can pop up on. Increase my armor rating. I don't want to end up against the Panzer IV and get slapped to the premium round straight to the face. Or the Iron Rain to get slapped straight to the face. Because, you know, that's pain. That is a lot of pain. And in a situation like this, it's still 5 to 4. But just because we have one extra tank doesn't mean you need to play aggressive, go in, and sacrifice your hit points. Whenever it comes down to situations like this, it's always best to reserve and play as cautiously as you can to try and hold yourself and keep your team alive. Now, with me at the 377 hit points that I have, I'm telling Blade, you've got the most hit points, I've got the least amount of hit points, I want you on the cap. And along with that, if I'm up on a ridge like this and I'm able to hit the front, I can actually pop up my tank a little bit, which is going to make me have better survivability, because I'm going to be able to increase my angle, um, it's going to be harder to penetrate me, while if I'm on the base cap, along with Blade, it's going to be a lot easier to pin me because I'm on flat ground. Now, being able to pop up your armor, or really think of your tank in any way that you can, being able to get it up, or doing a side scrape, or even going haul down, you know, it's always best to get, get into these situations and to stop and think to yourself, where do I need to go? Is, is it a good idea to take the HJ line all the way down to zero, or is it a better play just to hit the encounter and make it to where we have four minutes left on the clock and we know that we can cap out the base with one person on the base. So, we thought about it. We decided to hit the base and force them to come to us to force their hand to get them out of their haul down position because they were in a very strong position. And we're all low health, so really, we don't want to jump in and risk our hit points. We want to make them come to us because if they're coming to us, we have a lot more control over the situation. Now... There's a lot of things going on inside my head right now. I want to I want to try and pull around this corner, but I don't know where the Iron Rain is. I don't know where the Panzer IV is. Um, at this current moment in time, I was not worried about the other two tank destroyers that were alive. The only thing going through my head at this point in time was taking on the Type 59 and making sure he doesn't get a reset on the cap or makes it in. However, he already got a reset on the cap. There's... 56 seconds left on the clock. I know that I need to try and get as much as I can out and take down this Type 59 and then to rush the Iron Rain and try to take down Artie as quick as I can. 
because with 43 seconds left in the clock and it's a three versus three this is encounter and whenever you're playing on encounter it does not matter if there's one tank left alive in the enemy team and 15 tanks on the other team it is an automatic draw and it can it is counted as a loss so at this current moment i'm panicking a whole crap ton i'm telling them we need to rush we need to take these guys down fast now honestly rng usually is not this well on my side that shot on that iron rain was absolutely amazing 10 seconds left in the clock i have four seconds till i'm loaded pulling around the corner panicking like no other snapshot 390 win take over down to the last three seconds of the match and honestly matches like this you know they, they, these ones get your blood pumping quite a bit when you're playing the game and you end up in positions and everything that goes on along with that blade taking second and irvg that is actually tight bands he has a different name than what it was on youtube but yeah it, it is what it is so 99.8 and then the next match after this which was just as good but it's another really long one i didn't want to you know drag you guys into all these situations and then just stop and be like wow that was a 40 minute video so ah it was nice having you guys here it was you have no idea honestly i feel like i need to spend a little bit more time getting better at making content pumping it out but the state of the game and everything else that's going on you know i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt for the next couple of weeks so i'm just gonna do some content i'm not gonna mention anything that's going on and you know we can complain all we want but the way that we got to look at it, sometimes a game's got to change. And if a game changes, people are going to leave and some people are going to stay. The, the part that does suck, though, sure, we, we've got memories about the past. We, we have ideas how it was back in the day. But the only thing that we can do is be a part of the community and support each other as much as we can. There is no point to try and take sides and get angry because the second that we get angry and we start yelling at people or we start freaking out and calling people stupid or, you know, just there, there's no point because you don't listen to that guy. You listen to the guy who's calm, looks you directly in the eye and tells you exactly what he thinks. Because that's how it's supposed to be. So rather than, you know, getting upset or doing anything else, I kind of feel like taking a different approach and... I'm going to try and become a part of the super testing community as, as much as I can. Now I, I need to find out how to put in an application, uh, but you know, every, everything takes time. Now I'm going to keep you guys updated on everything that I do in relations to this game. And I do have questions. I have lots of questions. If I was able to get multiple content creators for world of tanks, let's say once every single two weeks, would you guys be down on YouTube specifically to tune in a Saturday once a month or once every single two weeks, just depending on how much content's coming out, everything that's going on, just to be able to sit back and listen to three random dudes chat about the game? I don't mean just randomly talk about it like, oh, hey, it's just World of Tanks. I mean, going over the newest tanks that have come out over the course of that month, see which ones are competitive or depending on like how maps are reworked or anything else has been reworked and stuff that's been changed. Because my channel, I focus around letting you guys know about stuff that comes out. I'm not really a weekly kind of update kind of dude because to me, I'll leave that for someone else to do. I'm not here to be monetized. I'm not here to be famous be a millionaire or whatever you want to call it for crying out loud i'm a content creator for a console game of course i'm not here to be famous i'm here because i enjoy the people that i play with on this game and i've been playing the game for a very long time and i just want to share my experiences that way we can try and make one of the best communities that we possibly can on world of tanks because i want to make pc look bad you guys have no idea how bad i want to make pc look because their community can be a little bit toxic at times but then again every single community has got somewhere toxic that you can end up so other than that if you guys like the videos leave a like comment subscribe if you didn't like the video well i'm sorry but there is a dislike button you can click um other than that i don't really know much to say except for everyone that has been helping me on my channel Everyone that has subscribed to me, follows me, watches my videos on a regular basis each time they pop out, when they pop out, cough, cough, two weeks at a time. But you have no idea how much I appreciate you. 
I would sit here and start naming off people that I remember from live streams, but we'd be sitting here for like 40 minutes. So other than that, I got a connection. I had stuff going on. And honestly, this is a hobby of mine. So I'm just here. I'm stuck. There's absolutely nothing I will do to go anywhere else. Until next time, it was nice having you guys here. See you on the battlefield.